let's talk about that Newcastle game. We'll start with you, Kate. Do you feel like that Newcastle game and the performance was um, a massive red flag uh, by the football that Ange Postecoglou is deploying at the moment? Do you know what? I, w- I was just saying to Josh, I think the, the um, reaction to that defeat was, well, it has been absolutely monumental. There's been the, an, an enormous meltdown within the fan base. Um, it was a terrible defeat, don't get me wrong. I thought we was all fall all over the pitch. But I think it's a case of, we know, you know, I, I've seen debate after debate of people saying Ange has got to change, he's naive, he's this, he's that, the other. We know what we're getting with Ange Postecoglou. He's made it clear everywhere he's ever been that this is how he plays and this is how he's always going to play. For me, it's not a red flag in the in the sense that I don't trust the manager, but it just highlights to me that we don't have the personnel that can play well enough to to do his system the way it needs to be played. You know, we've got so many players that don't fit, and until the summer comes, nothing, in my opinion, is going to change. I don't think Angel will change his system between now and the summer. So yeah, we may get a few more drummings along the way, but. I kind of respect the fact that he's instilling this philosophy. Um, I think changing it for the sake of a few months, I don't really see the point, you know. Not everyone keeps telling me they don't care about top four. So I say, you know, go go with it and let's wait and see when he gets the personnel, assuming he gets the personnel he wants. Let's see where we go from there. I'm not judging him on this season. I'm judging him on next season. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a good attitude to have, to be fair, and I'm kind of like the same. Uh, but Josh, do you feel that that was a red flag from what you saw at Newcastle? Um, it's, it's hard to say. So, like, not a red flag on Ange. I'm okay, totally okay with Ange. Um, and I'm hoping that, just very similar to Kate, that, like, it's the first season, it's just kind of growing pains when you compare him to... All the other big managers that did well, they all had results like this in their first season. Mm. Um, the only like kind of amber flag is like, you know, he he does need to make some adjustments sometimes. Well, do you know what would be a really good barometer? We can find out in this next game against Arsenal. We've got two weeks off. I don't mean to divert subject or whatever, but like, okay, you have that result. So, you know, that's a bad result against Newcastle. We've now got two weeks off. Does he do something special for Arsenal? Because you've got all this time on the training uh, ground. You can implement tactics that work specifically for Arsenal. I think to be a a, a manager that wins things, Klopp and uh, Pep, even though they have their philosophies, they do change things sometimes. So I do want to see some sort of adaptability. Some, I'm not saying I want us to start playing low block football or anything like that, but Can we pinpoint something in this next game where he's taken the time, he's used the advantage of two weeks to do something specifically to break Arteta? Um, That's the only amber flag I have. It's not a red flag because it's the first season, but I do want to start seeing as we progress now and go into next season, I want to see him change things, little tweaks on things to suit the um, opposition. Uh, I get your point, but you know, you, you, maybe Arteta is a bit of an exception to the rule, but you look at Pep Guardiola, you could look at Jurgen Klopp and what they brought when they first came to Man City and Liverpool. I mean, I know later on they ch- they started to change up their style a little bit um, for specific games, but they didn't do that at the beginning. Maybe it was just to try and instill that kind of way he yeah. wants the team to play on a consistent basis. So do you not think that Ange should be following that same suit or do you still think that maybe... Yeah, in this game particularly, we we do need to change it up. But then again, you look back at the performance at the Emirates, we didn't change it up for no one and we probably should have won that game. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I will say to that is, like, you know, I was listening to your stats show the other day, uh, or it was yesterday actually, wasn't it? It was a mm-hmm. really, really good show, by the way. Um, and when we look at those first 10 games, just like you guys were saying, People didn't know what to expect. Do you know what I mean? I, I think Arteta's going to have a better idea of, of what to expect. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is like, we haven't got a cup final this this season. We haven't got a semi-final where where I, I would want Ange to make some changes. Let's treat this Arsenal game because it's a, it's a like double whammy. We can, um, you know, if Villa pick up a poor result, then it puts us right back in for top four if we beat Arsenal. But also we get to stop Arsenal winning the league. If we beat them, that's it, done for me. Yeah. So let's treat it like a cup final and 
and do something like as if it was a semi-final or it was a final because they do make changes for for important games pep and, and Klopp. and you're right it's the first season but it's an important game and you can go back to whatever you want to do afterwards if you just want to play the same way out but but this game is very important for me so um yeah yeah sim as a as a heavily backer of Ange Postacoglu mm. like I think all of us are to be fair have you seen some red flags I think the main the major concern is that it lit, that kind of performance literally happened a couple of weeks ago at Fulham that is the big concern and that very quickly it happened again at Newcastle it was a really similar performance um, the fact that we were so vulnerable um, in the transition. How easy it was for the opposition to get into our box and create chances and create um, good opportunities from transition. And then on top of that, how easy it was for the opposition to create chances from set pieces as well. After that happened at Fulham, you would have thought, okay, learn a few lessons from that. Make I don't know about make a few adjustments, but understand why it went wrong at Fulham and try and, you know, learn from that game. And it seems like we didn't really learn from that game. And that's the biggest concern that it happened so quickly um, after that game. So obviously as well, you couple into the fact Newcastle were really depleted going into this game, missing a lot of defenders, a lot of midfielders. Uh, you would have looked at that um, Newcastle lineup, and yes, they had a very good front three out, but you would have looked at that um, defence in midfield and think, we have, we, we should be able to get out that defence, we should be able to win the midfield battle, and we weren't able to do either of those things. Um, and obviously, knowing our fixture list going forward, I know going to St. James is never an easy game, even when they got a depleted team, it's never an easy game. But with the top three coming up, it was a very big opportunity for us to get some points on the board with it in, in that top four race and make sure that we put ourselves in a good position. So the fact we not only lost the game, we not only um, didn't take advantage of Newcastle being depleted, but we got absolutely trounced. We got bad 4-0. It could have been even worse. <laughs> um, we every Every set piece looked like it was going to be a good chance for Newcastle. We couldn't, not only did we get trounced, we didn't even create a good opportunity apart from a couple of chances for Werner in the opening 15 minutes. And so you you take all that into account and you take into account it was a very similar performance against Fulham. And then you take into account um, how open we looked when there's been a lot of excuses being made for <laughs> why in certain games we've looked open or not. And a lot of excuses about we don't have this player in midfield, we don't have, you know, these players injured in the defence. But then you look at the midfield uh, against Newcastle, Basuma, Bentancor both playing. We've got our first choice back five playing and we still looked so vulnerable. And not only just vulnerable, like second best in every department, that is a major, major concern for me, the fact that that happened against Fulham and then it's happened again and we don't really have any excuses. Obviously, I'm willing to give it time. Obviously, I'm not sitting here saying I'm worried about Andrew's future or anything. I still believe in him and I still believe it, it will be a time thing. I believe win time, with um, these things hopefully will change. But that was definitely a, um, a big concern about what, ha what happened on Saturday, how... Um, tactically we just got completely done now to be fair to Eddie Howe he clearly made adjustments to how he usually plays he played a back five um, which Newcastle don't usually play I was listening to a um, Newcastle fan I was reading their comments uh, on our video and he said it's only the second time this whole season Newcastle have made a tactical adjustment for their opposition and the only other time was Man City and they nearly won that game against Man City I think De Bruyne came on late and saved the game for them. So they very nearly beat them as well. So Eddie Howe is a clever manager. Um, I have to, you have to give him credit. They came up with a tactical system. We had no answer. But the fact that we had no answer with a fully fit squad up against a completely depleted Newcastle team is a bit of a concern um, for me personally. So I hope we learn those lessons. But the problem is I said that against Fulham and we didn't learn the lessons. So that's kind of, I'm not saying one strike, but it's... I don't know how to I don't know how to articulate it, but the fact that I wanted him to learn the lessons from Fuller game and they didn't, right? That's kind of like okay, well that's one mark against you then, because you, you didn't learn the lessons that time. And I'm willing to give him a few more marks, but that is one mark against him after that game. Ben, yeah, but you... ben a broken, a broken sim. He's more, <laughs> <laughs> he's more, he's more I know. I Sims can't, more can't... out than you, Josh. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> no, I know, but I agree with everything all you're saying. I agree with what Josh said. These results will happen in the first game of the se in the first season under a new manager. Of course, I understand that, but. 
will it happen so quickly one after the other like that? I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit a bit concerned that we like it was exactly the same performance as Fulham. But you know, like, exactly we, the we same. All, we all came into this season being like the season's a bit of a free hit. If we get Europa League, it's going to be a good season. Um, and then obviously the ten the first ten games happened, and I think it all lulled us into a bit of a full sense of security of where Spurs Not are me. actually at. Not me. <laughs> apart I'm from you, George. You. Apart <laughs> from you. <laughs> um, but it, it lulled most of us into a full sense of security, right? Being like thinking that we're actually better than we are, and even then though we were saying there's going to be a lot of ups there's going to be a lot of downs this season and when these downs happen throughout this season people just throw their toys out the pram and I think it's just a bit unwarranted and we didn't we weren't able to have those downs with our first choice 11 in the first 10 games because we were so good and then we had all those injuries all those suspensions and we've only seen this first choice 11 come back very recently so maybe this is the now we're seeing these kind of dips that we're having with the first 11 and Ange needs to see the, this happen on a consistent basis so he knows how to um, change things and progress things going forward and see what kind of players he needs to buy in the summer. Yeah. So for me, it's not a red flag. For me, it's just part of the progression and part of how Ange can move forward. Um, so, yeah, obviously I was devastated with the performance and the result against Newcastle as I was against Fulham, as I was against Brighton and the other losses that we have this season. But I'm not too worried about it. Like... I'm not too worried about top four or not. I'm really not. My my biggest concern from now to the end of the season is stopping Arsenal win the league. I don't really care <laughs> about top four. So uh, that's where I'm at with it. So, But let, let, let me put this question to anyone in the panel or whoever. We have our first choice back five um, yesterday uh, on the weekend. We had Basuma and Bentancourt playing in midfield. Like... What was the problem then? Was it a case of would, um, was it a personnel issue? While we why the performance happened like it did on Saturday? Was it just a time issue with Ange's system getting used to his system? What do we what do we think the problem was? Our attackers, I think. I'll let Kate go. You go. No, go on. You're you're fine. Go on. You yeah. started so um, you can finish. <laughs> yeah, no. Just just basically our just just our attackers like. You know, Werner had, was it two chances Werner had? Yeah. 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 Well, three, we, technically. This, this, what did you say? Three? Well, kind of, because he had one that hit Son, didn't he? Like, he had a shot that hit oh, Son. Yeah. He had that volley, went over the bar, and then he had that one that Madison cut back, and he just went near the corner flag. I've, I've, I don't even want him as a squad player. I'm sorry. I don't care what anyone says. Like, I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm not saying he hasn't done some good things for us. But let's not, let's remember what we wanted him to come in as which was sons at the asia games or whatever it is and he's coming in to fill the void he, he you know none of us expected verna to light the world on fire or anything like that so just because he's he's laid on a few assists and scored the odd goal that hasn't really been important goals to be honest it's usually when we're like two nil up or whatever um let's not continue with this type of attacker which that can't hold on to the ball. Like, think about it. You've got Son, Johnson, and Werner, who all attack space. They are great in low. They'd be great under Conte when you, you're sitting back and they can bomb on. Yeah. Who are our attackers that can actually hold the ball and play clever passes and do short, quick runs and play off each other? Who plays off <coughs> Madison? Like earlier in the season, Madison and Son had a really good partnership, but that was because teams were giving us space. Arsenal, like when you think about the Arsenal Liverpool games, the even even Bournemouth were trying to press us off the park uh, and stuff like that. And Burnley, do you remember? Like mm -hmm. so, in when we've got low block um, opposition like Newcastle were, I wouldn't call them fully low block, but they were all good. When they didn't have the ball, they were they were playing like a bottom half team basically. Um, you have to have players that can do something else that speed isn't their only attribute I, I wouldn't mind if Werner could actually hit the target most of the time but he can't so yeah I think it's <laughs> our, our attackers not being able to hold on to the ball and finish their dinner yeah I mean Timo Werner is such a conflicting one throughout the fan base isn't it I mean I think it's like split down the middle half saying we should keep half saying we should get rid I mean there's even campaigns uh, online uh, for and against uh, Timo Werner which I think <laughs> is just nuts to me but I, I, I look at Timo Werner and I'm thinking like 
He can't be our out and out first choice left winger, no chance. But if yeah. we can bring someone else in, we're not going to be able to sign six or seven world class players this window. It's just never going to happen. So as fillers in the squad, Timo Werner for 15 million plus a Nico Williams or someone that can really uh, lead the line for us on that left hand side and be that kind of player that you want him to be. I think Timo Werner coming in as an option late in games, I think it would be brilliant. Yeah, I mean, for jo I agree with what Josh said to an extent. I think, for me, we Van der Ven had an absolute nightmare. That's one of the things that went wrong. And he's been sort of our star signing, really. And then I just think our midfield is shocking at the minute. For me, Basuma's not good enough um, to be a midfield general. Now, I know the first 10 games... Yeah, he was brilliant, but that means nothing to me when you're good for a third of the season and crap for two thirds of it. I would like to see a Zuba Mendy, someone like that, come in who's strong as a defensive midfielder but that can push forward. Um, because for me, when Basuma drops off, Matters drops off. It seems that they bounce off each other, and Basuma for me hasn't got that leadership in the midfield. I think Timo gets. A hell of a lot of hate and i think the fan base on the timo outside have used this game as another stick to beat him with um as another scapegoat um he was never going to be a prolific goal scorer anyone who thought that was out of their mind um he was a stopgap player um i personally think we're signing him i was all for signing him now i'm kind of mm, not sure, but for 12, 15 million, it's, what are you going to get for that? As a squad player, um, as you say, he's never going to be the first choice, but he's got experience. He, he's won where he's been, you know, and I think a lot of the trouble at Tottenham is the mentality of the players. You know, we, we need to win something. I know it, it sounds such an obvious thing to say, but winning breeds winning. And that mentality of crossing that first line of winning something is what, what's needed desperately at Spurs. And I think people like Romero who have won things, uh, Timo, are going to be only good for the dressing room. So for me, it was a combination of the midfield and the attack. But I think everybody on the day was rubbish. There was not even a single player that sort of shrouded himself in any sort of glory. Everybody was poor. Um, and I don't know, if, don't think you can blame Ange Postacoglu for that. Yeah, I think that's spot on. And I hate this kind of piling on when it's one player, when it's clearly 1-11. to 11. Every single player on that football pitch was just goddamn awful. So yeah. you can single out Timo Werner because he's the one uh, that missed those chances. But you got to single out every single player on that pitch because no one was up to scratch that day. So I think the, the kind of scapegoating of Timo Werner is a bit unfair um, after that Newcastle game.